Around 250,000 murder cases have gone unsolved in the last four decades alone. If a case goes unsolved, family, friends, and loved ones feel additional suffering due to the undisclosed circumstances of what might have taken place to the victim. Crimes often go unsolved for years or even decades, and in some more often challenging cases, the cases can go cold. Today, we will be discussing the challenging case of the Delphi murders, where two young girls, Abigail and Liberty, were viciously lured and murdered by someone who to this day is still unaccounted for. For this case, we are going to Carroll County, Indiana, specifically the town of Delphi, located 20 minutes northeast of the city of Lafayette. The town was founded in 1838 and named after the city of Delphi in Greece, the word originating from Delphis, meaning hollow or womb. Abigail, who also went by Abby, was born June 23, 2003, in Salt St. Mary, Michigan, to her loving mother, Anna Williams. She played the saxophone in her school band and was on the volleyball team. She loved reading, swimming, riding her ATV, and she loved taking camping trips to Michigan in the summers. She also had a passion for art and photography. Liberty, who also went by Libby, was born on December 27, 2002 in Lafayette, Indiana to Derek and Carrie German. She was in band at school and enjoyed a variety of sports, including volleyball, soccer, and swimming. She also loved the arts, often painting and doing different crafts, just like Abby. Both Libby and Abby were 8th grade students at Delphi Community Middle School, and they had been friends for some time before they were murdered. On February 13, 2017, the two girls decided to go hiking on a trail in Lafayette so they could take some photographs. Libby decided to ask her older sister, Kelsey German, if she could drop the two off at the trails a little after noon and they would call one of their parents to come pick them up later in the day when they were ready. At 1.35 p.m., Kelsey dropped the two girls off County Road 300, northeast of the Hoosier Heartland Highway. The girls were going to be hiking the Monin High Bridge over Deer Creek, a well-known historic bridge in the area. During the hike, Libby posted a photo to her social media account at 2.07 p.m., and this was sadly the last time the two girls were ever heard from. The girls had planned to meet Libby's father, Derek, at 3.15 p.m., however when he arrived, the girls weren't there. Both of the girls' families immediately began searching everywhere, and at 5.30 p.m. on that fateful Monday evening, the families notified the police that the girls were missing. Soon after being notified, the police began to search the area around the trails. The police initially stated that they didn't believe foul play to be involved, but believed more than likely the girls had gotten lost and were unable to find their way back. The police searched that night until about midnight and then the search team was called off for the night. However, many of the family members searched through the night and into the morning, not being able to rest with the girls missing. The search started back up early in the morning on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2017. At around noon, the search team was a half mile east of the Monin High Bridge when they found the bodies of Abby and Libby. Soon after, the police officially launched a criminal investigation into the murders of Abby and Libby. Although this had become a nationwide case, police released very little information or evidence relating to the murders. However, the evidence that was released is harrowing. On February 22nd, police released a muffled audio clip of the suspect, who can be heard saying something that sounds like, down the hill. This short audio clip was recorded from Libby's cell phone. Police hailed Libby as a hero for being able to record this video in a time of such distress, all while not letting the suspect know of her bravery. After the release of this audio clip, very little information was given, until July 17, 2017, 
when police distributed the first composite sketch of what they believed the suspect might look like. The sketch was created from eyewitnesses and a certain hiker who was around the area at the time the girls went missing. The man was described as being between 5'6 and 5'10, weighing 180 to 220 pounds with reddish brown hair. Police also say that in the first sketch, the hat was changed to make the facial features in the drawing more recognizable. With the release of the audio clip and the new sketch, police were hoping for some new tips to help solve the case, especially considering it had become such a well-known case by this time. Although many tips came in, none of them got the police any closer to finding the murderer. On April 19, 2019, the Indiana State Police announced that they were going to release some more material regarding the case in the hopes of getting new information leading to an arrest. Three days later, on April 22nd, the police released a short video clip of the suspect, wearing blue jeans and a jacket, walking on the bridge near Libby and Abby. One of the things the police noted about this video is that the suspect is not walking as he normally would. He's walking differently because of the gaps in the broken down bridge. There was also an extended version of the audio recording released in which the suspect can be heard saying the word, guys, in a slightly higher pitch than the other words heard, before saying the phrase, down the hill. The last item released by the police at this time was a new sketch of the suspect. The interesting part about the new sketch was that it no longer looked similar to the old sketch at all. The old sketch was an older looking man with a goatee, and the new sketch was a clean shaven, younger looking man. The police also noted that the suspect is likely between the ages of 18 and 40, but may look younger than what his true age is. Police also revealed the terrifying reality that the suspect might be hiding in plain sight because it was certainly at least someone who was very familiar with the Delphi area. An additional plea was made for help in identifying the driver of a vehicle left abandoned off the Hoosier Heartland Highway in Delphi. It was left at the former Child Services office between noon and 5 p.m. on the day of the murders. Although no suspects have been put on trial or arrested for the murders of Abby and Libby, there have been many accusations and suspects along the way. In September of 2017, Daniel Nations, a registered sex offender in the state of Indiana, was arrested in Colorado for threatening strangers with a hatchet on a hiking trail. Police noticed Daniel when they saw he had an expired Indiana license plate on his car. To make public speculation even more hectic, a bicyclist had been shot on the same day, around the same time that Daniel was scaring people on the trail. Even with the similarities between Daniel and the girl's case, in February of 2018, the police stated that Daniel was no longer a person of interest in the Delphi murder case. In November of 2018, a man named Thomas Bruce, who was previously a pastor, broke into a religious supply shop in the suburbs of St. Louis. Not only did he break into the supply shop, but he also ended up murdering one of the women working there and sexually assaulted the other two in a back closet. He was charged with 17 felonies for this crime in St. Louis and faced the death penalty. It was noticed by people who had an interest in the Delphi murders that he was wearing a flat cap and blue jacket during the murders, similar to the Delphi murderer and his stature also matched the stature of the suspect. No further evidence has been found on Thomas Bruce in relation to the Delphi murders. Although police have not mentioned him as a person of interest, they did note that they were going to look further into the possible similarities. In January of 2019, Charles Eldritch was arrested in Union City, Indiana, on charges of child molestation and child solicitation. After his arrest, people soon noticed his resemblances to the sketch released by police and reported it to the FBI. However, this was before the second sketch was released in April. Police soon declared that it was too soon to determine the connection between Charles and the Delphi murders, and soon said he was not a person of interest in the case. In July of 2019, 
Paul Eder was wanted for the kidnapping and sexual assault of a 26-year-old woman in Tippecanoe County, Indiana, in June. On July 28th, Paul was surrounded by police, and after a five-hour standoff, he killed himself. Although he was never linked to the case, many people saw a resemblance in him to the first sketch. For a long time after finding these suspects, there was little to no movement in the case. That is, until on April 27, 2021, Indiana State Police named 42-year-old James Brian Chadwell Jr. as a new person of interest in the Delphi murders. Earlier in the month, on April 19, 2021, Brian lured a 9-year-old neighbor girl into his house, beat her, sexually assaulted her, and locked her in a basement. When police knocked on his door, Chadwell stopped his assault and answered the door. The police then searched his house and found the girl in the basement, likely saving her life. After many interviews done with Brian's family, they all talked about his aggressive and evil past. Brian had a history with alcohol abuse and violent fights, all after his mother told him that his father was not his biological father. His sister, Ashley Chadwell, even stated in an interview that her brother was pure evil. Brian not only resembled a man similar to both the sketches, but he also lives only 20 miles away from where Libby and Abby were murdered. Although these are two similarities to the case, no arrest has been made on Chadwell for the murder of the girls. While this seems to be a good lead in the case, the police mentioned in an interview that he was not the only suspect. During an interview with Libby's grandfather, he said, while this guy certainly could be, maybe, possibly be, I've had 50,000 of those could be, maybe, and possiblys. Chadwell's sister said, even if her brother is not the man who killed Abby and Libby, he is still a danger to everyone he meets. Chadwell's brother said, he should never see the light of day again, and if he is responsible for killing the two girls in Delphi, he should be put down. In the last four years since the murders happened, the families of both Libby and Abby have been hopeful in finding some kind of relief from the pain they've had to endure. Hope has been brought to the family through the many suspects that have come to light and their community members that came together to help them through dark times. Although no arrests have been made in the case of the Delphi murders, the loved ones, families, and friends of Libby and Abby will all continue to fight because there's light at the end of the tunnel and justice will be served in one way or another.